I guess I'd just like to start by reintroducing myself for those who weren't on during the panel. My name is Cherie. I'm the Talent Acquisition Lead and I've got Morgan with me today who's one of our fantastic grads and we're just going to share a little bit about who we are as an organisation. Um, I would also like to do an acknowledgement to country. So we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which our sites are held. We pay respects to our elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders as the first people of Australia. You know, that's something that's really important to us as an organisation. So uh, we do have that as all of our, um, at the start of all of our meetings and presentations and things as well. So, um, but to, to get started, I'd love to just play a little bit video for you. So I'm really hoping that all the sound and everything comes through. Morgan, give me a bit of a thumbs up if it, um, if it starts to play. Perfect. So when I was a graduate, I had a mentor and our team leaders and online Zooms and face-to-face -face learning as well. Obviously, there's a lot of information coming in um, on your first job, but I think it also shows how willing Everyday Independence is to support you. There might be a lot of information, but it's all there for a reason and it's there to set you up for a success. The culture at Everyday Independence is one of my favourite things. So we have hubs where we can all come together and work um, in an interdisciplinary model. I drive 15 minutes to get to my hub in the morning and we all work together in a hub environment where you can sing out and say, hey, can I run this idea by you? Does anyone have any strategies for this? Yeah, it's, it's like a big family. <laughs> You have autonomy as to how you want your week to look. I know personally that I love an early Friday finish and that means that today, Tuesday, I might work a little bit longer knowing that Friday comes around and I can knock off and have a few drinks with my friends. It feels awesome. I just feel like I'm really respected as an individual. So when I started, I got a brand new car to drive around, um, which is very exciting. My Mazda CX-3, which I love. <laughs> I feel like I'm a completely different person now compared to when I first started as a graduate. Being in a supportive environment like Everyday Independence has really helped me further my clinical skills and imagine career growth in areas that I could never have imagined previously. And I can only really imagine how it's going to continue over the next 20 years of my career. So hopefully that paints a little bit of a picture for you as to uh, who some of our grads are. Um, and, and what, what, what they love about their roles. Uh, and we will talk to Morgan uh, as we go through the presentation, but obviously we've got Morgan with us who is an OT and also a key worker. Um, so really our presentation today is just to take you on a bit of a journey. And for us, it's about looking further and listening deeper to help break down the barriers to reveal people's true abilities. So we're all about making inclusion possible for all Australians. So we know that that's something that the NDIS is all about as well. So the way that we do that is really, you know, thinking bigger and working smarter, reaching further and pushing harder. So that's who we are as an organisation. Uh, and really some of our key values and mottos are really built on those foundations. Um, how we do that is by providing OT, speech, physio, positive behaviour support, early childhood intervention and habit coaches, which as I mentioned um, during the Q&A on the panel are really the roles that we are recruiting for. And that's really about creating changes in areas that aren't working in people's lives. So really trying to break down barriers as, as we're working with our participants to get the best outcome for them. The social model of therapy, um, and Morgan will touch on this a little bit when she talks about, you know, what her typical day looks like, but essentially the social model is really about working uh, out in the community, in people's homes. So we deliver therapy where people live, work and play. So we focus on the person's right to fully participate. Um, and one of our values is really about championing the person. So that's our participants as well as our employees and our candidates um, and really making therapy part of their daily routine. So embedding it in their everyday life. 
we are an organization that's been around for almost 25 years and we are absolutely growing. So we've got lots and lots of hub locations. As you can see there, we've got um, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, Adelaide has just opened up and uh, we are also opening up in Western Australia as well. We're growing so significantly. So you would definitely, um, if you're on SEEK or obviously any of the uni boards, you would definitely be seeing our roles posted up there on a very, very regular basis. Uh, as I mentioned, our values um, I've got listed here and you'll see some backgrounds that Morgan and I have both got on our screen, um, you know, champion the person and obviously change the game for myself. And, you know, for us, it's, um, you know, when we're in meetings, we can jump on and change the value that we've got behind us to really I guess, reflect how we're feeling on that day. You know, it might be something that we're doing a bit of a team approach. So, we'll, you know, we might pop a background on that says one team with purpose. But, you know, these are really refreshed values that we're really proud of. And as an organisation, we really try and embed these into our daily lives, whether we're dealing with our colleagues or whether our therapists are delivering therapy to our participants. These are the values that, that we like to uphold and certainly the values that we're looking for uh, well, while we're recruiting as well. So we think everyday independence is a really great place to work. We think that, um, you know, it's an enriching and really learning environment. We have weekly peer learning networks. We have technology, technology systems and tools to help you plan and understand and improve the impact that you can have. Um, and we know that it's all about the evidence. So we're, we're an organization that's a really evidence-based team. We're an interdisciplinary team and we really support each other. Um, and Morgan will talk a little bit more about what that looks like from her perspective as well. But, you know, it's really about the support to balance your career aspirations with your everyday life and what that looks like for you. So everyday perks, um, we've broken, broken them down into three sections. So everyday growth, so um, professional development. So we have a professional development budget. Um, Obviously, I mentioned in the Q&A as well, career coaching and the dedicated induction program. So we have a dedicated program for our grads, which I'll talk through as well, as well for a different one focused for our experienced therapists when we bring them on board as well. Uh, role flexibility, relocation, you can start in one state and, you know, COVID permitting, you could move up to the coast or somewhere else like that, which is, you know, certainly really exciting. A purpose leave is something that we have that will allow you to take 12 months off, um, really explore your passion. If it's volunteering in, in Kenya or whatever that looks like for you, that's something that we think is really important. Uh, we have purchase leave, 12 weeks of paid parental leave. Um, oh, sorry, I'll just go back one. Bear with me, previous. Um, and, and certainly our everyday well-being is looking at holistically what that looks like. So health and well-being is really important for us. We have really vibrant hub life. We have pet-friendly hubs. So quite often you will see a furry friend running around some of our hub locations. You know, for me in Bendigo, regional Victoria, Fridays are my favourite day of the week, not only because it's close to the weekend, but Fridays are Puppy Friday, uh, where we have a roster where people will bring in their dogs or their, their cat or some pet, uh, which is we think is really exciting and, you know, kind of helps lift the mood a little bit. Um, we do have discounts through Employment Hero and also our wellbeing days. So our graduate program, as you can see up there, it is a 12-month program. Um, and it's broken down, as you can see, into, you know, into sections. So I'll just talk you through what that looks like. And I think the starting point there is really that support to transition you from university into the workforce. So we've listened to our graduates and looked at the clinical skills as well as the emotional well-being. So we're really a team of trailblazers who support each other to bring out our best every day. And we do it with lots of humour and fun. So weeks one to six. Um, you start to look at how you work in the social model. So, you know, talking about the social model, and as I said, Morgan will elaborate that on that a little bit more, but that's really, I guess, something that you don't necessarily learn in university and we don't expect you to know that. So we, we talk you through what, all of what that looks like. Week six is a wellbeing day where you can relax and unwind with other grads as part of a wellbeing day. 
Um, I know previously some of the things that have been done on a wellbeing day are, are pottery, um, you know, making things together and just, I guess, really building those connections as a team. Um, months three to six, this is really where you start to hone your skills. So we have discipline specific mentors um, with learning modules that are really specific to our grads. We have fortnightly mentoring sessions, again, that are discipline specific, and you'll be mentored by some of the best therapists in the industry. You'll also have uh, team leader support and work through your monthly grow goals one-on-one on -one with your team leader. And month six there, you'll see a team challenge. So that is something that can be a real life challenge or problem to help us uh, as the organization to solve. So it could be around a cultural project, um, commercializing our content or a communication uh, strategy that we're looking at. And it's really you working in small groups. Uh, you'll be given time in that second six months to work through the program and present it back on graduation day to the board, to the exec, to our CEO, and it's really a bit of a celebration um, as a whole team where you've learned a bunch of skills uh, around feedback, working as a team, innovation, all of those types of things. So that's something that we're really excited to introduce into our graduate program. Um, months six to 12 is where you really start to take charge of your future. So I mentioned previously that we have a dedicated careers coach, and this is where you can really unpack your career aspirations, future pathways, and determine what your future looks like at Everyday Independence. Month line, we have a volunteer day, um, and this is where it's really part of giving back to the community. So you'd be, you could be working uh, individually or working as a team. And as I said, uh, it would be a task where, where you would be giving back to the community. And month 12, well, congratulations, you've made it through your graduate program um, and you'll continue to develop and move into a role where you know as an early career clinician you'll stay connected and supported within the organization and really start to rock your role as to who you are within everyday independence. Our career pathways well each therapist has a comprehensive development plan with mentoring coaching and projects roles embedded in the levels um, signposts towards career advancements and we have career pathways for all of our disciplines. So occupational therapists, physio, speech, leadership, early childhood and positive behavior support. So professional development for each team member has uh, a learning and development plan, which we call a grow plan. Um, and you'll start to develop that annually with your career coach. Now, just some images on here of all the social activities that we've done, obviously pre-COVID, and you'll see down in the left-hand corner there, one of our uh, visitors in Bendigo on a Friday, um, but certainly we're a team that really loves spending time together and, um, you know, having having fun, you know, it's really important to make sure that you're connected uh, as, a, as a team socially and also, you know, professionally as well. So, Morgan, I will hand over to you to share your story. Thank you. So, yeah, as I was mentioned before, my name's Morgan. I'm an occupational therapist and I have now gone down the path of an early childhood key worker. So I started at Everyday Independence as a new graduate um, working across the lifespan in all different ages. And I realized pretty quickly that I was interested in working with kids and adolescents. So I spent more time working in that sort of younger age group and then did some additional training and development to become a key worker who specialises in early childhood intervention. And I was really supported by my team leader and my admin team to hand over my other participants out of that area. So now I'm really working in that specialised area of early childhood. And um, part of that journey has that's really encouraged me to keep going is working in the social model. So that means that I'm working with participants in their natural environments. So I'll give you a rundown of today. Today, I went out this morning to support a young boy doing remote learning. He finds it really hard to sit and concentrate at home. So we adapted it to a COVID style session and helped him through remote learning. I then went out to see a young girl who I'm supporting with potty training. She's only three years old and she's really sweet. She wants to be potty trained before she starts kinder next year. 
And then I also had a park session where I helped a, a young boy go to the park and we learned um, some gross motor skills and climbing the equipment and confidence and safety in the park. So it's a really, really varied um, day in the life. But that's what I love about the social model. We get to do the activities that the goal exists in and we get to go into their natural environments. Um, so that's sort of a typical day, but there's no, no typical day at EI. It's always a bit different. Um, and now that I have really found that area of interest of mine working in early childhood, I've also been successful as a team leader and I'll be starting that position next year. So that will be starting around my two year mark. And that's really exciting that Everyday Independence has encouraged me to develop my clinical skills in the area of my interest and then also take an uh, approach to leadership as well. So some of the supports that I have worked with to get to this point is at the start, I had the Octa Flying Start program, the Everyday Flying Start program, and that was a graded approach. So my KPI started really, really low. And over that first um, couple of months, it built up gradually. I then had the new graduate mentoring, which was discipline specific and really helped me to ask those case by case questions and work out what I was doing because at university you don't learn any of this stuff so that really helped me to unpack case studies and develop my clinical experience. Um, one of the best things about everyday independence is that we are Australia wide so I could actually tap into online mentoring where I could access specialists across Australia in all different areas so I also take on some people with assistive technology, but that's not my specialty. So I need to get some more mentoring even still from people in other states sometimes to build those skills. And I've had my support from my team leader the whole way throughout my journey with monthly check-ins, but also weekly check-ins, daily check-ins. She texts me today saying, I haven't seen you in a while due to COVID, how are you going? Uh, one of the greatest things as well, I'll wrap up quickly, is professional development at Everyday Independence. So with all of that support from my admin team, my team leader, my mentors, I've also been able to access internal professional development, such as unpacking sensory profiles, um, learning the coach approach, developing experience with keyword sign. And now with my external PD budget, I am looking into courses such as the Learn to Play course, obviously specialising in early childhood and I know another thing that a lot of people are keen for is the OT conference so you know they're all sort of opportunities that are available through our external PD and there's also lots of internal PD that have really helped develop my skills and shape my pathway to everyday independence. Thanks so much Morgan I've just got a couple of really quick slides Phil if I can just I'll really quickly whip through them um, so just in terms of our application, really just wanted to paint a picture for people that our roles are always open. We are always recruiting, as you can see um, on the previous slides there, that we are growing. We're always opening new hubs and looking for, for new team members. Um, so there's lots of ways to apply. So whether that's via Uni Jobs Board or Grad Australia or on our website directly. Um, and certainly if you're shortlisted, uh, we've actually very, very recently lost, launched an on-demand video and assessment piece that you can um, complete. So you'd be sent an invite uh, with a link to complete all of that online in your own time, uh, wherever is comfortable for you. And uh, what we love about this new platform is that you get to engage in a realistic scenario. So we, gi we give you um, a video content of a participant that we're working with and, and kind of talk through what that case study will look like. Um, and as I said, you can do that in the privacy of your own home whenever you like. Like, we review that and come back to you, ask you any questions, um, and then we can organise, you know, a face-to-face -face chat uh, with a team leader or someone from the talent acquisition team. And I do have a little tip in relation to reference checks. Please do ask your referees what they will say about you. I think it's a um, it's a really interesting topic. We quite often have referees that we contact and they say, oh, I didn't know that such and such had put me down as a referee. Um, and they're not really prepared to answer questions about you. So I think definitely let them know that you're putting them down as a referee and ask them what they will say so that you know exactly what, what we're going to be hearing. Um, and we won't leave you wondering, offers are made really, really quickly. Uh, we, we'll come back to you and make sure that um, 
you know, we can talk through when your commencement date would suit. We have inductions for our graduates in November, January and March. Um, and again, they're, they're those really tailored induction programs. And I've just got all my contact details up on there for you. Um, so if you wanted to call me directly or email me directly, or you can find me on LinkedIn, um, you know, for us, it's really about starting that conversation with you and, and hopefully building a relationship that we can talk through what's right for you as a candidate and how we can meet your needs as an organisation and equally, um, you know, find that balance and that fit in terms of what we're looking for as well as what you're looking for. So thanks so much, Phil. I think you're still on mute. I am on mute. <laughs> Who would have known? Now I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving, I was giving Kim shade, and now I've done it. How good! Um, <laughs> thank you for sharing, everyone. I, uh, I've just got one question, which I might sneak in, um, yep. but it was so. I'm an occupational therapy graduate, and I was just wondering what type of questions you would ask during the interview process, and how should I best prepare going in for an interview? Yeah, great question. So as I mentioned, yeah. our interview platform is the, um, the video online assessment piece. So the questions that we ask there, we do have some behavioural questions. Uh, we do have a specific case study ready for you. But I think, you know, it's really about being open and honest how if you haven't um, been faced with the scenario that we give you, that really just kind of having a think through and showing us your ability to problem solve um, and think on your feet and be really flexible with what you what you're able to um, bring to a potential therapy session you know we're really looking for some soft skills as well so there's some questions around soft skills in there too beautiful thanks Sheree appreciate you coming on and thanks Morgan as well for uh, jumping in legend no worries thanks for having us awesome my pleasure see you soon